finally to the good stuff. We've had several weeks now talking about everything that denies the fruit of the Spirit and the work of the Spirit in their lives. Last week was those things of the flesh. Remember what they were? Here's your test. Or some of the things that show that you live in the flesh, meaning that you're guided by your desires and passions and lusts above everything else. Hmm? Drunkenness was one. Oh, we're drunk last week, right? So you don't remember. Shouldn't lie. That wasn't in there, but it was sexual immorality, debauchery, sorcery, envy, factions, all those things that deny the spirit. So now we're at the good stuff, right? The fruit of the spirit is what? Without looking, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I actually asked my friend Sam, my young pastor friend, if he would make a video of me for, for me for this morning singing the song. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit because the fruit is peace, love, joy, patience, kindness, generous, generosity, faithfulness, self-control. It's hard to remember. He knows it by heart. He's like, he would not do that for me, little rat. So I got to slaughter it myself up here. But these are things to remember because this is the fruit of the Spirit. If you want to make a fruit salad, call in the Holy Spirit, boys and girls, because this is good stuff we got here going on. Today we're going to focus on the first three, love, joy, and peace. Here's another Bible quiz for you. And if you don't know the answer to this, that's fine. I had to look it up myself. Which appears more in Scripture, do you think, love, joy, or peace? Love. Good answer, Carolyn. I looked at her and she said it. Yep. How many times do you think it appears in scripture? Hundreds? How many hundreds? Over 700, nearly 800 times does the word love appear in scripture. The various words translated as love in scripture. How about peace? That's the next one. Not on the list, the next one that shows up more than anything else in scripture. Over 300 times. And joy? Only 269, but I bet you'll get this one if you think about it in a moment. Which book of the Bible contains the word joy more than any other, than any other book in the Bible? Psalms. Psalms. Very good. See, you all know more than you think you do. Love, joy, and peace. They sort of go together, don't they? Now, I want to ask you something. Is love... Let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you. I asked the people at the first service, and they always looked at me like, why do we come to this service? She expects us to talk back. What is love? This is something we use so many times. We say, I love Brussels sprouts, or I hate Brussels sprouts. I love chocolate. I love this. I love that. I love the other. Or if you say to someone, I love you, it means something different than saying, love ya, right? Love ya. Like it's not a big deal if you say, love ya, without the I there. What is love? You ever stop to think about what it is? How many of you have said in the last 24 hours to someone, I love you? What did you mean by that? Nobody has an answer to that one, huh? Caring. What? Deep a deep caring. Absolutely, that's part of it. What else is it? It's a feeling. Providing comfort, Kaylee says up here. Providing comfort. Amen. That's a good one. How many of you love someone very deeply in your life right now? How many of you would give your own life for that person's life? Same hands are up that were. Where does love come from, though? Is it a feeling? Is it just a feeling? I think it is a feeling, but what else does, where does it come from? I think it's a gift from God. It's a gift from God. Amen. If it's a fruit of the Spirit, if your life is connected to the Spirit, you're going to produce love. But love is more than just what the Spirit gives us. Love is a choice. It's both a gift and a choice. How do you choose to love? How do you choose to love? Through humility, that's one good way, through humility. How else do you choose to love? Taking care of someone else. Caring for the environment is love, love for God. It's self-giving, isn't it? It's giving yourself away in little pieces at a time. Now, there was a book that came out before I was in seminary. It came out in the 1970s, late 70s, called What is Right with the Church? I cannot find that exact book because, I don't know if you're aware, but you cannot copyright a title. So you could all go home and write Gone with the Wind and sell it. 
cannot copyright a title, and there are all kinds of books called What's Right with the Church, but this one got me because this was back in a day when a pastor said to his congregation, we have a child in our congregation, a teenager, who is pregnant. That was when that was a scandalous, terrible thing. People were like, oh, my goodness. The parents threw her out of the house, which happened a lot in those days as well. He said, I need someone to adopt this baby for this child. I want you to go home and pray about it. He said, I will not, I will not be satisfied unless one of, the, one of the families of this fine congregation, you all love Jesus Christ, I want one family to come forward next week and adopt this baby so this girl does not have to go through an abortion. You know what happened the next week? A couple stood up. They didn't just adopt the baby. They adopted that 16-year-old girl as well. That is love. That is letting the Spirit guide your life so that she didn't have to give up her baby. She, wanted, she didn't want to have to have an abortion. She didn't want to have to give up her baby either, but she knew that was best. But this family said, you know, if we're going to love like Jesus Christ, we've got to learn to dig deeper, and that's what love is about, digging deeper. So if that's love, what is joy? Got the joy, 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 joy down in your heart. Where? You know that song? The outward expression of love. I think that's a good way to look at it, the outward expression of love. It is, is it the same as being happy? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. You know that one, right? Kayla, you said no, it's not the same as happiness and love and joy. I mean, joy and happiness are not the same. You want to say anything more about that or you just want... I love this kid. I don't need to preach. You want to come up and take my spot right now? She said, happiness is what? It's a feeling. Comes and goes, right? But joy continues through your life. Amen to that. I've told this story before, and it's just, it still moves me. When my husband died, I was away for three Sundays. And I always go back to Bill Brown and say thank you for that, because I was, the first week my husband, he died on a Sunday. He fell on a Sunday and died the following Sunday. Anytime I was not with him, I was on the phone begging someone to preach for me and help me out at church. I was asking retired pastors, everybody else, and they all said, I don't think so this week. Call me in a couple weeks. If you really need me, maybe I'll come. I'm just not in the mood to preach right now. I was like, seriously, I seriously need you to come do this for me. No, I can't really do it right now. Bill Brown texted me, and all it said was anything at all, anything. And I texted him back, and I said, I need Elizabeth, who was his associate pastor. She took over my congregation for three weeks. The next Sunday, I was in southern West Virginia for the second of his funerals. And then the third Sunday, I went to another church just because I could not go back and sit in my own pulpit again without some time. But before I preached that morning, I taught Sunday school for the senior highs. I'd been their pastor for 10 years at that point, and they knew me very well since they were little kids. And they all looked like deer in headlights. And one of them said, they wouldn't say a word to me, and I said, you don't know what to say, do you? And they were like, mm -mm -mm. I said, if you know someone who's lost someone close to them, you say, I'm sorry, first and foremost. Don't try to explain it away. Don't say he's in a better place. And this kid said, yeah, I hate that. People said that to my grandmother when my grandfather died, and it sounded like he's better off without you. I said, that's what it feels like. Because heaven is a better place, duh. Do you believe in heaven? Is it better than Cockeysville? Maybe a little bit. Even parked in a little bit, Timonium, Georgetown, West Virginia. But Jesus sat down and cried with his friends, knowing that he was going to call Lazarus from his tomb. So there's nothing wrong with grieving those you love. And there's nothing wrong with just saying, I'm sorry. And I said, and if you really mean it, say, I love you. And all these kids said, we love you, Pastor Terry. And they did. No, they didn't. I said, and if you really mean it, say, you're going to pray for somebody, if you mean it. And one kid said, we pray for you every night. I've prayed for you every night since your husband died. And I know he meant it. And one of the boys said something to me that just always stuck with me. He said, I said, do you have any questions or anything else? He said, no. And he said, I didn't expect you to be so. He said, I don't know if this is the right word or not, joyful. I said, absolutely right. I am joyful. I am joyful. I am giving thanks to God that I had my husband only for 17 years, but I had him. I said, and my joy is knowing that God has me no matter what happens. I said, it's different than happiness, and they all got it then. Because happiness depends on what's happening around you, right? If one of you were to bring me a hot fudge Sunday right now, I'd be pretty happy. <laughs> now, don't go out and do that, but I would be happy. 
but I was not happy that day. I said, I've never been less happy in my life, but I have joy. Joy is not the absence of suffering. It is the presence of God when you suffer. Amen? No one can steal your joy. No one can take joy from you. Joy is unquenchable. It is part of the life of being in Jesus Christ. So what is peace then? I've said this to you before. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom, which means more than we're just not going to fight anymore. What does shalom mean? Wholeness, fulfillment, completion, having everything that you need in abundance, and not just you, but the whole of society has what they need. Peace is what comes out of a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. Peace is what flows from us if we stay connected to the Holy Spirit, right? But what does it say about a bad tree doesn't bear good fruit or a good tree doesn't bear bad fruit? You can't go to a peach tree and expect to pick cherries, can you? So if we're connected to the world and all its misery, if we just wallow in the misery of the world, we're going to wallow in all that other stuff, aren't we? That debauchery and factions and dissension and fighting and backbiting. Remember, Paul said, be careful. If you don't stop biting each other, you're going to devour each other. You'll swallow each other whole. There will be nothing left of anyone. But if you're connected to God through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's going to work through you in these beautiful ways. You're going to have love. You're going to know love. You're going to spread love because you'll be motivated by love, joy, and peace. These are gifts from God, but they're also choices that we make because you can be blessed with the gift of love and choose not to love. You can be given joy through the Spirit and choose to live a life of just nastiness and focusing on everything that's wrong. I learned a secret this year that I have, I've jokingly said to Kara sometimes, I once had a very good egg, and she'll laugh at that. You know, if, if something good happens to you and you stop for 17 seconds and focus on it, that it will never leave you again. And I was on my camping trip back in the spring Last year with my friend, we were in a cabin, and I had the most perfectly cooked egg. You know how eggs sometimes just, they're not really that great, but sometimes you get one that's absolutely right. It's like bananas. There is a day that a banana hits its peak. There's a moment in that day, right, when you eat it and it's perfectly ripe, but it's not mushy and it's not too hard, it's not too green, it's not perfect. If you stop and say, this is really a perfect egg, this is a great banana, and you focus on it for 17 seconds, it will come back to you when you need it. What if we did that with the big things in life, the joy in our lives, knowing Jesus Christ, coming back to the time of our confirmation or our baptism or our wedding? I tell every bride and groom who I marry, I say, look at each other right now, and then look at the crowd of people smiling back at you, and I say, look at each other again, they look at each other, I say, you'll never see him look that good again, take it in. She will never weigh that little again, take it in. Look at each other in love because you're going to need this day. And I say, I hope this moment comes back to haunt you because there will be days when you will think to yourself, what was I thinking? I want this moment to come back because then you'll realize what you were thinking and you'll say, thank you, God. Thank you so very much. So we've got to cultivate these things and we have to share them with each other. If we really want to be connected to the Spirit, it can't just be with us. We can't say, I have love in my heart, but I don't like anybody else in this room. It doesn't work that way, does it? I have joy, but I'm not going to share it. I'm not going to tell anybody what the source is. Or I have peace in my life. The rest of you can just go find your own peace. It has to connect us to one another. It has to. We've got to cultivate love. We've got to cultivate joy. We've got to cultivate peace. We have to share them with everyone we meet. You've got to be prepared to tell somebody why you're so joyful. Not that you're happy, and especially when you've had tragedy in your lives. What a week to look at these passages. I tell you what, I have had a week at my house. Um, the storm, I think, has done structural damage to my home. I'm really worried. My toe went through my bedroom wall this morning. Yeah, not a good, Larry's looking like, what? Larry the builder is going, what? Yeah, it's right through the wall. I think I got big water damage in my house right now. And my friend Charlie, we've prayed for his wife these weeks. She died this week. And my good friend, I can't say her name because her bishop does not know yet who is a pastor in the conference. Um, we found out she has a tumor pressing on her brain stem. It's been a hard week. But nothing's going to 
say that I don't have the joy of God in my heart. Nothing's going to say that I don't have the peace that passes understanding because it's not about what is happening in the world. It's about how we respond to it. I've threatened to write a book so many times called What Not to Say. What not to say to someone who has lost their spouse or their child. Don't say he is in a better place because you just want to plunk him in the head when they say that to you, those moments. What not to say to someone who's overweight. When's the baby due? You don't want to say that to anybody. Trust me. Trust me on that one. One of the things that I would like to say is one of the secrets of life. That's my other book, The Secrets of Life. You cannot control what happens to you. You can only control how you respond to it. Amen? You cannot control what happens to you, but you can, re you can certainly control how you respond to it. That is what we're going to do. We're going to live a life of love with one another. We do get angry at each other. We're a family here in the church, right? People do things that tick us off. We can either let that become a wedge and a faction and show that we don't belong to Jesus Christ or we can live in the spirit and we can love and forgive because peace will not happen, that shalom, without being able to truly forgive others in the name of our Savior. So the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I hate that last one. We'll get to that in a couple more weeks. There's no law against these things. You cannot say, I don't, I don't have to love you because of what you do or who you are. That is not what this is saying. This is saying there's no law against loving someone who is different, who believes and votes differently than you do, whose lifestyle seems abhorrent to you. That does not mean you do not get to choose to love them. You don't get to choose to hate anyone in this world. That is what is antithetical to the grace of God and the spirit of Jesus Christ in our midst. We choose to love. We choose joy. We choose peace. So my prayer for you this week is that you will take these, these things to heart. And if you find yourself having a perfect egg or seeing a perfect sunrise or sunset or a rainbow or having a conversation with someone where you remind them how much you love them and how important they are to you, that you let that sink into you for 17 whole seconds so that it can come back when you need it most and share those moments with others in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.